So when we're describing motion, when you describe something, you can describe something in words and you can describe something visually. I think the graphs are much more powerful because they convey so much information. In the graph I just j showed you, I could show two runners, two different speeds. I could show you when they passed each other and I could show you what they did when they started and what they finished. And that took me a whole lot just to say that, but in a graph I could see it immediately. But when we're describing motion, we have to use words like distance and time. So today what I want to do is I want to talk about comparing some of those words. And I want to talk about, first of all, I want to talk about motion and position. Talk about motion and position. All right, if you will look at the smart board, we have Gracie's car. All I want you to do is to look at the position of Gracie's car in the beginning, which is at the top. And then I want you to look at the position of Gracie's car on the bottom. And I want you to answer this question. How far did Gracie's car move? If you answered four, you're wrong. If you answered six, you're right. Now then, pat yourself on the back. There was one thing that you had to do in order to get it right. What was that? You had to be able to subtract. Okay, I know you guys can all subtract. But what else did you have to do in order to get that right? You had to have what's called a point of reference. So the point of reference in this case was probably the front of the car, and then it moved a certain distance, and then you looked at where the front of the car was at then, and then you subtracted the before from the after, and you got the distance that the car went. So you have to have a point of reference in order, in order to observe motion. Next bullet in your notes, let's talk about distance and displacement. So you're writing, you're writing. So distance is how far you gone, how far you go. And displacement Displacement is how far you are from where you started. So I like to do the example where I, where I walk around the classroom and I'm probably going to stumble over stuff. So I'll just kind of, okay. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've gone a distance of eleven. What's my displacement? zero because I'm right back I'm right back from where I started so my displacement is zero okay so that's the difference between distance and displacement so I hope you got that in your head all right I've got a lot to say about speed let's talk about a trip of going to Atlanta and I want to use just round numbers so I know that you, there's various places. If you're going to the airport, it takes a little bit longer as if you're go, rather than going to some of the suburbs on the north end of Atlanta. But let's just say that as the crow flies, it's about 100 miles, and it takes a couple of hours. It takes a couple of hours to get to Atlanta, and it's, it's about 100 miles. So your average speed, Average speed is your distance over your time, your total distance over your time. A book definition of speed might be distance per unit time. Speed, speed is how far you travel in a certain amount of time. So really speed in general is how far you travel in a certain amount of time. Average speed is your total distance in your total time. So we've all been drawing graphs. We have been drawing position versus time graphs, or uh, distance versus time graphs in this case. So let's do our distance in miles. And so we said it was about 100 miles to Atlanta, and that we did it in about two hours. So 
total distance, total time, our average speed, if total distance divided by total time, speed is equal to our total distance of 100 divided by our total time of 2 is about 50 miles per hour. But when you're going to Atlanta, are you always going 50 miles an hour? No, 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 no. no. Because what? Sometimes you get to go... Sometimes you get to go 80, right? On the interstate. Yes. Well, and then sometimes when you get into Atlanta at 5 o'clock in the afternoon... No, you got to go like... Like almost zero, right? You got to go like 10. Right. So we have to talk about something else. So we have to talk about instantaneous speed. Because... Shh, 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 please. Because... Average speed is what your total time and what your total distance is, but instantaneous speed is what you're going right now. What you're going right now. When you start on your trip, you're in your neighborhood and you have to get out on the freeway first, right? So your speed is pretty slow because there's low slope here. But then when you get to get on the interstate, then your speed can increase, right? Until you get into Atlanta traffic in their neighborhoods, and then you have to slow down. So just like I was asking you at the end of the Explore, does the curve really look like a straight line? No. no. More faithfully represented, it, it looks like this. Unless you're driving with my wife. Because she likes to go to the outlets in Gaffney that are about an hour away. Oh, yeah. So here's what our graph looks like. Better do this in another color, right? <laughs> so we, get, we follow the same path. We're going through the neighborhood. Then we get to get on the interstate. And then we get to Gaffney and we go nowhere, right? <laughs> because she's shopping in Gaffney. Until she's done shopping and then we can finish and we can go to Atlanta, right? So the graphs tell a story. The graphs tell a story. And that's what I like about the graphs. Because you can obviously see that somebody stopped in Gaffney and somebody went straight there. Right. OK. Um, so I've talked about average speed and instantaneous speed. I guess that I want to make, make sure you've got this in your note. Uh, you did make sure you have in your notes that average speed is total distance over total time. What does your speedometer say in your car? Is it your average speed or your instantaneous speed? It's what you're going right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next bullet. All right, next topic, calculating speed. This shouldn't be too difficult for you. But I want to show you a little trick, and students seem to like it when I do this. Draw this little triangle, and let's see, we're going to go speed, distance, and time. Make my D a little better. Your basic speed equation, speed, is equal to distance divided by time. That's the average speed that we were talking about. But this, an e this is an equation with three unknowns. And if you know two of them, you should be able to figure out the other one. Now, you guys have all had algebra, so I'm sure that you can do this no problem. But let me just show you this little gimmick right here. I don't like to teach gimmicks, but students seem to like gimmicks. So if you want to know speed, you cover up the S. And it's distance divided by time. If you want to know time, you cover up t, and it's distance over speed. And if you want to know distance, you cover up distance, and it's speed times time. So you should have in your notes these three different equations so that you don't actually have to think 
when the when you get a question that asks you asks you for say distance given speed and time right but this is a nice little gimmick and here are the three ways that we can write that so in your in the textbook at this point there would be some example problems that we could work i'm going to assume that you guys can always guess the answer to these plug and play type problems that's right. right. So if I give you any two of these, you should be able to solve it for the unknown with this equation just by substituting and solving equation. Okay?